This is going to be a quick walk around of the teardrop. That's pretty much done, except for things that I will add to it later. So it's been sitting out here in the garage, and it's pretty hot, so it's about, about 90 degrees. I'm going to lay this back down. I just cranked up the AC to... Um, crank the PAC to cool it down in there a little bit. So I'm going to go to the front. Uh, I did add a spare to it. I bought one of these spare tire carrier lug nuts things from Academy. And when it sticks up through here, the thing's really not big enough so it sticks up that much extra. So it need a whole stack of washers or another big giant nut on it or something. So I'm going to figure some other way to bolt that down and it does have a little handle to lift it up which makes it really super super easy you know, freshened up the paint on the trailer and the fenders were they were black and they looked pretty bad we got some dust on now but I fixed the fenders they were crimped pretty tight here so if you bumped them they would just chatter like crazy got some new tire on there um, the uh, windows are tinted. This one actually has a little cardboard window treatment in there for keep the sun out. So if you want to sleep late because you're out fishing all night long, and got a, a nice little uh, deck light. I put a piece of window tint in here to tone it down a little bit. Starting to gather some dust on the roof. There's my um, fantastic roof vent fan. Three speed. There's the old hurricane hinge sticker I got at Lake Tech Santa. It's no longer a state park, privately owned now. These are my covers for my cross ventilation. You can see right up in there. A little bit of screen water to keep the bugs out. So when you close in the hatch, you drop that hatch all the way down. Um, and running the air conditioner, it makes some heat. Of course, on a hot day, it's going to make a lot of heat. So, pretty much what you want to do is it has a little breaker in the cord. You turn that on, and then it's blown out air right here. And it looks just like the one on the other side. And this side doesn't have a whole lot of personality, just that one vent. But it's just right for somebody to put a giant sticker on there of a, I don't know, desert scene or I think it'd be cool painted as a redfish. Okay, so we got the uh, galley light which is on a dimmer. You can dim it down, brighten it up. I put some running the wires through the spars. Put some little clips here to hold the wires down. Mungle all of them in this tubing. Then all the main wiring, which goes up into the trailer for the ceiling fan and the light, the interior lights and exterior lights come all the way down here. And we got a, a nice blade fuse here where if, if one fuse burns out, it'll show you that light right there, let you know which one's burned out or if you took it out. And I got all the wires kind of neatly arranged there. Uh, didn't, have not yet cut this light, extra line off, I'm not sure, you know, maybe later on I might want to run that wire somewhere else or hide it or do something different with it or cut into it with a switch. This is uh, my power feed here. So it will get a hatch right here on the outside to where you just unscrew it or flip it up and pull the cord out, plug it in. This trailer so small, actually what I did on the lights, I took the brackets and I tilted them up just a little bit so it's more visible to the uh, other drivers. The drawer I had I added just recently, it's a full extension drawer and at the same time, look at that, let's see if I can get that wire up out of the way, the drawer turns. Um, door doubles as a uh, 
cutting board or shelf space. There's a little bit of difference in color between this and this because this was polyurethane and then fiberglass resin and this is just fiberglass resin. And you got uh, your milk crates which fit in here just right and slide well. That whole, this whole pan area, let me pull this loose. This whole pan area in here is all sealed really super good with fiberglass resin. So if I have an issue of water dripping, say like from the air conditioner, which uh, by the way, I do have something for that. Um, it, it will fill completely up to here. It's all watertight. To keep the door from shutting, I just put a uh, roof lock on it. I mean a window lock, roof lock, window lock. I got the battery tied down. This is a battery tender charger. This is my drainage system for the air conditioner. I usually put a little Vaseline in there to help with the seal. And then um, you can, it's kind of hard doing this with one hand. Put it like that. Later on, I want to get one of those little small vents are about that big, and they you just drill a hole and put it right there so I can run this. I can run it straight across, and then it'd be out of the way. And then around to the door. Got a little step stool for. Oh, well, that's kind of short. On the inside, ooh, it's nice and cool in here. I can feel it already. See the camera fogs up. Let's see. Look at that. Dropped it down to 50 degrees during the time I was yakking. Pretty cold. Pretty cold. The uh, that little box there was given to me by my sister-in-law because it kind of has that old look to it. There's my 6,000 BTU AC. And if you look right here on the door, you got a remote. I didn't really, wasn't looking for a remote, but it came with one, so um, using it. And it's to get up there with Velcro. So again, another light with a dimmer on it. Three speed fan. Man, it will suck some air out of here in a hurry. That's on low. That's on high. You suck all your air conditioning out quickly too. Let's see if we can shut that. Okay, you can see my let's see, where's my spot? My little piece of cardboard. It's just force fits right into the window. So it's like that. Put it back up. And your little privacy. A little bitty table. So if you're sitting here, you can set your cell phone on it or, or your iPad or iPod. There's a mosquito in here. And then another little table. You can hear that Velcro working. Just swing that out. And I got it where it's sitting in between here so you don't accidentally knock it out. This table, these tables are real fragile, but they do the job. Easy to fix if you break one. And I got my, have an indirect light up here because uh, this one over, overhead, was, without that window tint in there was really super harsh, so it wasn't really fit for reading. Uh, I should have put one back here on that part of the wall, but I didn't do it. I thought about it, and I thought, well, I probably won't be reading much, but yeah, the next one I'll build is going to have one there. Uh, I did have that shelf on the wall behind me. And I started bumping my head on it, so I decided to move it. And then I put a light up here, another one of the same kind of lights with has a dimmer on it. So you can have indirect lighting. And on each side I got a little squid hood. And pretty much I didn't um, on the roofing. 
I did not fill the nail holes up. I just kind of went with it because the, the little brads that I nailed it with looked kind of like brass. And um, I was okay with that. And I got plenty of space under for my feet. Oops. Might have to take a Dramamine peel after this. But I wore a size 10 shoe. I don't know if you can see my feet down there or not. Um, there's plenty of room. Could have put an even thicker mattress in here. And I have this damper in here to keep the moisture down so it doesn't get old and smelly. And I cut more of these circles. Let's see. Got dark in here, huh? Cut more of these circles for the windows. There we go. And that's. You can see around the edges where I didn't get the tent all the way to the edge, but it does its job. And then I got a four plugs there for whatever you want to plug in, charging phones or um, electric heater, whatever you want to do. Super cool. Hope you like it.